<laughs> Anyways, <laughs> back to chemistry. Uh, so let's show uh, what we were doing. In fact, the la very last reaction that we um, did yesterday was the addition of um, halogens to alkenes, right? So do you guys remember what the name of the type of compound we're going to make over here is? No, no, that we haven't done that reaction. Well, that's going to be the intermediate, the bromonium ion intermediate. And then we're going to make a dihalide, okay? So it's an alkyl halide, but with two halogens on it. So remember, if you're going to do the mechanism, which I'm sure everybody wants me to do, right? Everybody wants me to do the mechanism on this one? Okay. So when you're going to do the mechanism, you have to erase this part or rewrite it, okay? So if you've got pencil or a whiteboard erase, and show the Lewis structure with all the lone pair electrons. If you do that, it'll help you so much. And you have to, you can't show all your arrows happening at once, like a lot of you guys like to do on your exams, okay? You have to show them stepwise, the actual steps that the arrows are performing, okay? So, remember, do you guys remember how many arrows are in this first step? Yeah, so this is the one of the, you know, more involved uh, mechanistic steps where we have three arrows, okay? The most involved that you've seen. Um, so, first thing, this alkene sees that electrophilic bromine there. Now remember, it's electrophilic because this bromide ion is very, it, that's going to be formed is very big, doesn't mind to have that negative charge, so it's very stable on its own. So, that's going to kick that bromide ion off with those extra electrons. So it's going to have a negative charge, right? And then these electrons, because remember, bromine is big, especially relative to carbon. Carbon's very small. So bromine occupies a lot of space. All of these halogens do that do this reaction. So, when it gets into close proximity of these two carbons, it's going to make two bonds to or one bond to each of those carbons, two bonds off that bromine. So how did we depict that? Remember, like that. Okay, so now draw the intermediate, or the product of that reaction, which is the intermediate of our overall reaction, product of that reaction step. So we make that intermediate there. So remember, this is sp2, sp2, right? We have two sp2 centers here. We're bonding four things to those carbons. We make sp3 centers out of them. Okay. So is this going to be the only intermediate that we form? Beyond minus. Okay. Yeah, we'll have beyond minus as well. well. What else will we have? Yeah, on the back, right? So we call it the enantiomer, obviously. Sorry about my ugly drawing. This is really well. Too tall. And then again.
in the VR minus, right? That VR minus is what is what uh, is what got down. kicked off. Yes, exactly. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you. You, you had it right though. Yeah, that okay. is what got kicked off. Okay. So we can form these two intermediates. What do we call these again? In an antumers, but t the type of intermediate they are are the bromonium ion. Okay. So bromonium ions, and like you guys said, they're in antumers. So is this where we stop this reaction? Did we want to get bromonium ions as our product? What did we want again? Dihalides, right? So we're going to have to put another what on this thing? Yeah, another halogen. Okay, so we got a Br minus out here. What is it going to do? Well, remember, this bromine is electronegative relative to the carbon atom. Okay, so don't let that positive charge trick you there. Okay, the electrons are going to flow to that positive charge. But the bromine's not going to attack that bromine, because if that happened, then we just go back here. Does that make sense? Okay. So, in fact, this carbon here and this carbon here are very electropositive. Okay? So um, they have a delta plus charge on them. So this bromine can attack that carbon there. Okay? Or it can attack that carbon, but it attacks this carbon and knocks the, these electrons to that bromine, and if it attacks this carbon and knocks these electrons to that bromine. Okay. So these are two different reactions. Normally, since um, normally you wouldn't want to write them both at the, on the same structure. I just want to show you on the same structure that each one of them can happen. Okay, so so let's just for right now erase one of these and show what happens in those solid ones. You could choose on say an exam or a quiz. Well, you're going to have to draw them all if I said draw the mechanism. But the thing is, is I would not make you draw this whole mechanism. Mostly it would be like, what are these arrows showing? Or show this enantiomer, or something like that. Show the mechanism to this bromonium ion. You're not going to have to do the whole mechanism. It would be, it would be too much for you guys to, to do on a test. what the products are of this reaction though and you should be able to do the mechanism on your own. Okay. So it's not like you shouldn't be able to do it, but to grade you on each step is a little much. Okay, so does everybody agree that would be the product from that solid re reaction mechanistic arrows? Why would the bromine up here be in the back? Yeah, so that's like an SN2 reaction, right? So notice there's an SN2 reaction within the addition reaction. So let's show let's show the attack at the dash with the dash lines that we were talking about earlier. Is everybody okay with that? So I'm gonna erase these reaction arrows. Just so we're not showing the mechanism on the same or the same substrate. Like that. And what are we gonna get here? We do this. Well
So, can you guys see what the relationship between these two molecules is? Do you have a question? So we can start there. So one was a back base attack, one was a front base attack? No, -uh. they're both they're both SN2 reactions, so they have to be what? It's not back face for SN2, what do we call it? Back side. Back side attack, right? So we get the inversion of configuration. When we're talking about the face attack, it's like the SN2 uh, centers. Okay, this is SP3, I mean S SP2 centers not SP3 centers, right? So is this, what kind of carbon is this here? What's the hybridization? Look up here. Yo, look up here. What's the hybridization of that carbon? SP3. SP3, right? So can't, it, we don't have front base and back base on those SP3s. We only have SN2 reactions, okay, if they're going to happen simultaneously. So, we've got this over here. What's the relationship between, so what kind of reaction is this then? That we just did. I know it's early, guys, come on. Uh, SN2. SN2, right. We just said that. Okay, what's the relationship between those two products of that reaction? They're in antigers. because all of the stereocenters are opposite of each other. If you can't tell, do your R and S configuration. Okay, so let's do the attack at these ones, okay? So, or with this intermediate. So we're going to attack there. Knock that out. So if we do that, do we get either one of these products? So let's call this one A. And let's call this one B. If we attack that and show those mechanistic arrows, do we get either one of those products? Do we get A or B? Get B. We get A. Yeah, we get A. Right? Why would you get A? Yeah, so there, right? So the bromine's going to be pointing which way? This bromine here. Well, towards us or away from us? Towards us. Towards us, right? Why? Why isn't the methyl group pointing towards us? Do I have to go over it again? So, what kind of reaction is happening here? SN2. And what happens in an SN2 reaction? Inversion of configuration. So, why isn't the methyl group pointing towards us anymore? Inverse. Because we had an inversion of configuration. Don't make it harder than what it is. We know all these rules. Okay? So here, if we do that, what do we get? We get that. So it goes to A. So this goes to A. Well, the one that we had before, the solid line before, goes to A. And let's erase this. <coughs> And show dash lines here. Like Do we get one of those products up there, A or B? B. Do you see that? Why would we get B there? Where, where is the this bromine going to go? How about that? Yeah, it's going to stay at the back. Why does it stay at the back? Does it get it detached from that carbon at all? Uh -uh. So the carbon's still hanging on to it from the back. Okay. Does that make sense? So let's just show that's another SN2 reaction. We're going to have that inversion of configuration at that stereocenter. So notice we only get two products from these two intermediates. You might think we would get four products, okay? but we don't. But you have to do all of this to know which products you're going to get. Okay, so what would be the ratio of each of these products? What's the percentage? 
50-50. Why is that? In answers? Well, no. Is there a SN2 reaction? Mm -hmm. It is racemic mixture, yes. That means 50-50. Why? Why is it racemic? It's because of these intermediates here, right? So since uh, there's no preference to attack this carbon or this carbon on this intermediate, or this carbon or this carbon on this intermediate, there's nothing really standing in the way. You're going to have a 50-50 or racing mixture of these um, enantiomers. Okay, any questions on this?